Today on Dungeon Craft, I'm going to show you how to make this green slime mini from scratch. Hi, welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm your host, Professor Dungeon Master, and today we're going to show you how to make this green slime mini from scratch. Green slime is a classic D&D monster. It goes all the way back to the first edition, the original monster manual. I've collected miniatures for years, but I have never found a green slime mini. So this morning I woke up and I thought to myself, wait a second, you're a professor. You could just make a green slime mini. So that's what we're going to do. This is a great craft for beginners because all you need is a hot glue gun, some paint, a metal washer like this one for a base. You can make this green slime in about a half an hour. And once we're done, I'm gonna give you a quick encounter where you can use this green slime to terrorize your players. All right, so here we have our washer and I have a painting bowl. And I'm gonna put that right there. Put a little hot glue there. Just enough to tack it down. I will be able to pry it up later. And we're going to go towards the outside and that's going to be our first circle and we're going to let that cool and we're not going to do any more than that because otherwise you're just going to get a it's if there's too much glue it would just melt and spread out so it's about two minutes later and now we're ready for another go around. I'm um, it's not one steady stream. I'm kind of pumping it right, because that will make it more bubbly looking and give it more texture. Now we're gonna let that sit. Now the surface is covered, and now we're gonna go back on the top and what we're gonna do is we're gonna squeeze little like balls and they're gonna turn out it's gonna look like bubbling we want our slide to be lumpy right, and so now for the finishing touch we'll just put one bubble there You make them small and then you make a little circular motion. If you have any strands of glue, you can remove them with an X-Acto knife. Just pull them away while it's still wet. Okay, so I want to show you the color palette. We have very dark green, campground green, and dark gray. And I'm going to mix them up and that's going to be the base coat. I'm going to take an old brush, mix this up. Just gonna slap that on. I do the edges first. And we set that aside to dry for five minutes. Here's our color palette for the green slime. After the base coat, we have a very dark green, like a fluorescent green, and then we're getting into yellow green and green yellow. After this, after the base coat, we're going to paint it over in, it's like a forest green. Now, do we go right to this fluorescent green? No. We actually use the darker green, mix it with that fluorescent green, wipe it on this paper towel, then go over the top. See, that didn't look too much darker, but when it comes out on the model, it really makes a huge difference. I'm pulling down. All right, next we go to that lighter green. Next we're going to add that yellow citron. All right, now we're just going to add a little bit of yellow. 
and just for the top highlights. And our green slime is done. And when we just pop it off, and we have a green slime. There's another green slime that I used at the beginning of the video, but I've, I've made two of them. Our player characters descend the stairs to the next dungeon level. At the bottom of the stairs, they find an archway. The arch blocks the ceiling beyond, and that is where the green slime lurks. Have each player character roll a 20-sided die. The slime drops on the player who rolls lowest. In this case, Titus. If that character has a helmet or a shield, have the slime fall on the shield and immediately begin sizzling and dissolving the metal. Ask the player what they're doing and give the player seven seconds to respond. Count backwards. Seven, six, five, four. The correct answer is, I drop it or I fling it to the floor. If they don't, they'll take damage. If they do it, the object will be destroyed. If they have chainmail, they need to take off their shirt and throw it on the ground before the slime eats through the metal and their flesh. If the victim has scale mail or plate mail, another player has to spend a few rounds unbuckling it. Don't have the victim take damage yet, but make the encounter intense. Perhaps the helper needs to make a successful dexterity check within three rounds to get the armor off. The slime can only drop from above. It can't move, so the players need only state that they're stepping out of the area to avoid the slime. But if they're dumb enough to stay, the slime will drop on them, too. If the slime comes into contact with flesh, it will cause 2d6 points of damage on first contact and will turn a victim into green slime in d4 plus 1 rounds. Burning it with a torch or fire will kill it immediately. This should not be a lethal encounter, but it can be tense, especially if the party is new to D&D. I once described the green slime as enveloping a character's hand, and the players who were new to the game amputated the character's arm. Grizzly. But creative. If you've made the mistake of giving your characters too many magic weapons, green slime is a great way to get rid of them. If your players keep bragging obnoxiously over his plus two sword, here's a way to get rid of it. And just imagine the look on your player's face as his plus five holy avenger melts away. And here's another cool idea. Around the corner is the goblin guard room. The goblins use the slime as an alarm system. When they hear the player screaming, they know it's time to attack. So now you have your own green slime. Wow, that was quick and easy. We'll do this again soon. In the meantime, if you found this video to be helpful, give it a thumbs up. For future updates, subscribe. I'm Professor Dungeon Master for Dungeon Craft. I'll see you at the table, and may all your rolls be natural 20s.